So, what do you think we should do? I'm thinking what we should do, and you see if you agree, these forks look like they're stuck up too far up this way. That's why this fender's sitting on the tire. What if we take that front wheel off and see what happens? Yeah. Okay, so we have to lift this up first so we can take that off. So let's just be real you, careful. You lift that up. Well, I'm not lifting it up with my muscles. <laughs> I'm going to lift it up with this. What are you thinking? What the heck is that? Well, there's a hook over here. And if I pull that off, I can put it on there. Alright. Outside, but I have another one here. I can put on a safety okay, strap. Right okay. 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 I'm going to turn off this heater. A safety strap? What's yes. safety strap? Well, one thing we have going on here is it's hanging from the chain, right? Up on the beam on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Well, what if for the first time in the world that chain broke? That would be a bad thing, right? Especially if we were underneath it. So if we put on a second strap, then just to make sure, then it'll be safe. So then, so then it won't fall down? That's right. If it broke then, then it won't fall down. Anyhow. Well, there's quite a knot I've got here. You hold that in, and I'll see if I can undo Do this. Do we put the hook oh, here? Yeah. Mm, we will, yes. First of all, look at this knot. It's, it's not the knot in the history of Earth. Okay. Right now, you don't shake it. It's got to actually come through. There we go. Now, one thing I'll do is put this end on because this end I have to... Now, where are we going to hang this from? Let's see. How about... This is a safety strap. Are you learning? So now we have yeah. two straps on there. You can pay attention and learn. Now we can go right underneath it without any worries. It won't fall anywhere. You know what I've discovered? Like I sort of woke up in the middle of the night screaming about? Other than me being a ditz? Right. <laughs> Other than that, the reason this fender is so low to the tire is I think these shocks are compressed and stuck in the up position. Oh. I think that's why the rubber boots are all squeezed together. So. So what is our project tonight, Papa Sean? Well, we decided that we would pull this front wheel off and maybe oh. see, first of all, there's only a nail holding it on. That's that's not really a good thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you found that out before I went driving on it. Right, that's probably a good thing. Right here's a nail coming out. You be careful, you're going to pinch your finger in that. I have to get a hammer. I think I almost got it. Keep going. Oh, got it. <laughs> almost done. Let's see if I can... Um, Definitely not reusing that nail. That's a bad idea. Yep. I could look in the instructions. That's boring. Let's just fumble our way through it. Okay. You know what the best shop people wear? Just for safety. Oh, yes. Safety glasses. And you can have your own pair. Yeah. yeah. And now you're going to stand your eyes. Well, they look good on you, too. Oh, they do. <laughs> Okay, watch this. It only shoots a little bit of fire. Whoa. What do you think of that? So now that's all just one type of gas, but when I mix oxygen with it. Wow. So that's really hot. It's just a little, but it's really hot. So if I put that down on the metal, we so have to put it over here. See how it turns it red hot? Yeah. And then I see my hand over it. 
to the uh, it says I'm only hammer with one hand. is going to be to get this idle figured out. This throttle situation, it's just revving way too high. Now, there's only, I think, three ways that could happen. Uh, you know, the throttle is, is stuck. It's just an, an adjustment on the idle screw, but I've already been through that and I know it's not that. Uh, idle screw is here. And all that does is turn a screw into the barrel, which rides down inside here, inside that throat, attached to the thumb lever up here. So I've already unscrewed that, taken that out, and I know that it's sitting down in there fine. Uh, the other thing might be an air leak in the intake manifold. I don't really think that there's an issue with this intake. So my thinking is it's the third thing, and that is something to do with the choke over here. I think if I pull this out, I think I'm going to find that it is it's stuck in the open position. Because it, it's not really called a choke on a Makuni carburetor. It's a, a shoot, I forget what they call it, a um, richener. I think it's an enrichener. And um, all that does is open up a secondary channel for gas to flow in heavy and mix with the air and straight to the engine it goes. As soon as it starts, you know, when it's cold, you're supposed to kick the choke off and it goes back, it seals off that package and then goes back to the main uh, intake throat of the carburetor. And the choke lever would normally be up here, but it's clearly broken off. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if this choke cable even works, but uh, that's gonna be today's project, all right? so. Let's figure out how to make this thing idle low, idle properly, and then we can putz around the yard with it. <laughs> Get down in there. All right. If I have to, I'm going to remove this carburetor and uh, get into it deeper. I'm going to check the main jet, that kind of thing, check the float. I have no, uh, I discovered where the uh, decompression lever is. I, I never thought to try that before, and the light in here might not let you see it, but I just got to move that up, and then when I pull it over. It's kind of nice that they put it over on this side of the bike. And then you got to walk all the way around. 
and, and pull on this side of the bike. <laughs> and then if it doesn't start, you go back around, you know, I suppose you could probably reach up and under, but you know, this thing's hot, you're probably gonna burn your arm. Yeah, it's, it's doable from this side. Okay, I can actually see it from this side. It just would have been nice if they somehow made a, make a rod that goes over there and put the thing right here beside the, the uh, pull start, the recoil. So there's gasoline in here, mm -hmm. and it's in a liquid form. It kind of looks like apple juice. Mm -hmm. But in order to make it go into the engine and make all that noise and make it go, you have to mix it with air so that it's, and spray it like as if you had a mouthful of water and you went, <laughs> comes out as a spray, right? Mm -hmm. So the way it does that is it makes it spray in here through holes and it mixes it with air, and when it goes in the engine, it goes and explodes several times a second. So, there's a problem with it though. You have to have that mix just right. You can't let it just go in like crazy or it runs really loud and too high. You have to control it. You have to allow only a little bit of gas to go in. And right now... And how are we going to take that out? Well, I think what's happening is there's a part over here that works off of this lever here, it's supposed to be a lever, just a button, I think it might be stuck open and allowing too much gas to go in. So I Yeah, gonna, there, I see a string. Yeah, and, and it should be pulling out, but it's not, so I think the little plunger that's in there is stuck. So, let's get this off and out of the way, at least this end of it, so I can see better. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think I it's a Phillips it. screwdriver. I can balance it. Okay, so that's on run. Put in some fuel, not too much, and give it a pull. It's still revving high. We gotta get the smoke out. I might have to go in the house for a little bit because now I'm not going to have heat in here for a while and um, I'm going to have to start taking this car warrior out. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> this is horrible. Carburetor out. Not so hard. You know what? There is an O-ring here that looks like someone's just put some goop on it to try to fix it but I mean, I have O-rings. <laughs> you think that's that might be the problem? It might have just been sucking in air where it attaches to the intake tube, and uh, you know that's obviously somebody's just tried to goop that up. So I'm gonna go to my O-ring supply and see what I got. All right, I just uh, got a pick and pried out the O-ring out of this out of its slot and take a look. It was broken, so uh, that's not even close to being <laughs> good. Time to take this puppy apart. All right. Okay, looks nice and clean on the inside there. Everything looks good. Nothing's gummed up. But I might as well take the float out and just drop this carb into the parts cleaner and then blow out some of the passages here. All right, I'm gonna give this a little scrub in the other room. All right, I cleaned up the carb here and it looks nice and shiny and everything looks really good inside. All the passages blew out real nice after cleaning it out in the, in the Varsol tank there. There's a fuel mixture screw or something there. I honestly thought that uh, this carburetor was gonna be a mess. But it's not. Now, this might be a problem. <clears throat> that screwdriver is a little loose. Come on, really? But it's not going to work. Oh, it came out. So I don't know what this is. There is a there's an O-ring on it. I think it's a mixture screw, but it almost seems more like it's a 
uh, drain screw. You know, loosen that off and the fuel bowl will drain out. Alright, the only thing I don't really like about this screw is I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be an o-ring on the on just under the head of it there and it's it's really not it's uh it's squared off there's no round shape to it anymore so I'm gonna make sure I have one first oh yeah yeah I'm gonna get that out with the pick like what's with the hole in the bottom is gas not just gonna pour right out the bottom of that or maybe it's meant to <gasps> Maybe it is. It's probably meant to drain out this bottom part if the if the bowl overfills. So if the bowl overfills, you don't want all the gas running down into the engine, you know, coming up through where it's, you know, the the main jet there and then flowing all into the engine. It's going to it's going to ruin the engine. It's going to hydrolock it and break it. So it's meant to overflow so this little tube here will, if gas gets up over the top of it, it'll just leak it straight down and out the bottom. And the only way it's going to get up to that is if the bowl overflows because the float's not closing off the flow of gasoline. So, let's put this back on. Gasket looks fine so I'm not going to mess with that. Let's put it back together. Now, oh, I was going to change that O-ring, wasn't I? Well, that makes a big difference. <laughs> that old one was, oh, it was flattened right out. Okay, so that's snugged up. Now that mixture screw I was curious about, that's in a hidden spot. If it's super tight, that means the factory peened it and doesn't want it messed with, so I won't mess with it. Oh, it is tight. It's tightened right up. All right. Um... I'm going to pull it out then and see what this is and then tighten it back up again. Might need an O-ring. Well, it's definitely a mixture screw. Let's clean that off a little bit. I'm going to get uh, a little bit of a cleaner on that. So, I'm going to take a minute and read. Well, that's interesting because it's describing the mixture screw as being um, one to two turns out. Oh, sorry, no, that's on a 225. One and three quarters to two and a half turns out from a slightly seated position. This mixture screw was in tight. It was seated tight. Okay, so I'm going to put it back in. And so there it is, snug. So one, one, two. But now it's loose. Hmm, I would rather have either, maybe there's supposed to be a spring on it? Yes, it's supposed to have a spring and there's no spring. So, that's why it's not working. There is an O-ring down in there, I see. Alright, I'm going to see if I can find a spring. Alright, so I'm kind of guessing here I have a, a spring kit, but, you know, I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How do you know which one it is? How about just trying one? I mean, that would go on, but I don't know if it's too long. I mean, I could try it. What are my options? I, 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 the next thing to do would be cut a coil off, right? Cut it shorter. Alright, this is the one that's going to be then. I think the spring is compressing instead of seating yeah so I'm gonna have to shorten that spring some oh that o-ring's messed up down in there now might have to get a pick and chase that out and put in a new one there it goes oh it's tiny little guy I don't think I have one that small the smallest one I have that one. Oh yeah, that'll work, I think. I think it's flat down in there. I'm just going to run the screw in without a spring on it just to see how it feels. I think it's fine in there. 
Is it even there? Yep. All right. I still want to use the spring though. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get the the snips and, and cut some of it off. I would think, you know, can I go for the picture and guess? It's a, it's just a, about the same length maybe as the point of the uh, mixer screw. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a little shorter. Okay. So that bottomed out there, right there, and the back out too. One, two, and I don't think it's going to vibrate itself loose. I think it's all right. So that's the idle mixture screw, <laughs> which was messed up. I mean, my idle was ridiculous. I think it's time to put it back together. She's still smoking a bunch, but uh, I think it's gonna be needing a piston ring or two. Um, in the meantime, it's gonna—it's got <laughs> plenty of power. I mean, all right. So the test drive worked out nicely. I think—I uh, think that's a good thing. That test drive went well. 
Um, forward works, reverse works, second gear works. The brakes are crappy. <laughs> you really got to push down on that pedal to get some brake action. But I mean, you just touch this throttle and you're popping a wheelie. So, but. It's a pretty fast little unit. I don't know how people <laughs> rode these things to tell you the truth. It's, uh, I mean, it was pitch black out in my test drive, so uh, I can't even see where I'm going. At one time the front wheel was in the air and I didn't even know it <laughs> until I landed. <laughs> All right, so that's it for now. She's running. I'm happy. Next, get this body cleaned off some more, get the electric start working, uh, get the brakes working. All right, that's it. That's the carburetor <laughs> clean. I guess I didn't really rebuild it. Bunch of O-rings. That's what I did. It was a bunch of O-rings in the carburetor. Here you go. Thanks for tuning in from Ontario. We're out. Cheers.